There he is. How are you, buddy? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> Very good. Technology, you, hey? Yeah. What, what, was the, uh, what was the delay there? Um, I don't know why it didn't work on the Mac. I've done plenty of live um, uh, on the Mac. So it's just a matter of, yeah, flicking it over to the, the iPhone. Yeah, so, so this, is, this is different, okay, because we're, we're not using Zoom, and I wanted to do this specifically with you because, and, and, and do a little teaching here because I think that there's the opportunity to make it really, really simple because a lot of times, you know, you and I understand Zoom and webinar platforms, but, you know, most property managers just need a real easy, simple way to go live uh, into yep. a group or, or to their page. And so yeah, yeah. This, this, this technology where you can go live from your phone and interview somebody um, like, like Dennis, all, you ha all I had to do was literally just click on go live. I went down to the Ooh. bottom and I said, I want to invite somebody. And yeah. then I invited Dennis. And, and because I'm, I'm in landscape mode, I'm able to have Dennis you know, side by side with me here um, as opposed to just being a little thumbnail if I was in portrait mode. So that's just a little oh, so, tip. Okay, yeah. I didn't know that because I've, um, I've done some live on my phones when I'm at conferences um, and it's the little thumbnail that comes up. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah. So I've actually got my tripod that Michael Sands told me to buy when we're in the US together. <laughs> so it's sitting on a tripod, so I'm hands-free. So um, yeah. even on an iPhone, you can actually have it looking like a, a professional setup. Yes. And, you know, it doesn't have to, I mean, it can be super low tech, but what's great is, is that you can do this. Hey, Dave, um, is that anybody can do this. I mean, it's, it's literally from your smartphone. And yep. again, you can bring in the added value of having somebody, an expert, and Michael says, work it. Yes, he's working it. Although Michael, I have to say, did not want to jump in, you know, like I invited him and he just totally was like, eh, nope, not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> denied. He denied. So, so question for you then, how, how did you get the 50-50 split with the Facebook Live? All, all I did, again, so all I did is I just started the live video with my phone in landscape mode from the oh, beginning. Okay, from the beginning. So I normally yes. do it because Facebook normally likes it. Ah, yes. there you go. So if you okay. start it in portrait mode, it will it will run in portrait mode the, the entire time. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. And so and, and what will happen is, is people will watch it. will have to watch it in portrait mode. The nice thing I like about this is that is that this format is 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 better suited. Uh, I think it's better. It's more engaging. It creates an equal, you know, like yeah. an equal interview opportunity. And the other little secret is is use these these this is yeah. this right here as you as you, you're doing is that you know the audio is so much crisper and cleaner and mm -hmm. so guys just model the behavior do do this this simple strategy go live to your facebook page bring in other experts i know dennis you and uh and your partner there we're, we're talking about how you know you can do a day uh where you bring in a bunch of strategic partners for these, you know, I just saw a post that you guys made where you do a day where you bring in all these strategic partners for the landlords and investors. Well, you can create the same kind of community outside of that one day or two day event that you have in a yeah. Facebook group. And I'm doing that with Jason from Real Property Management in Canada, um, where we're building this community in his local area, 30, 40 mile radius of, you know, Toronto. And, yeah, um, yeah. It, you know, it creates a really good opportunity for these guys to really grow their, their local base of, of landlords and, and uh, owners there. But well, anyway, even, look, the, even the conference that we're running, we've got the, um, you spoke at our very first Inspired Growth Training Day. So it's now a three-day conference. That's how much it's grown in three years, right? But um, wow. we're actually looking at, um, you know, we understand some people can't make it. So we're actually looking at doing a Facebook Live of the entire conference, so um, yeah. into our members. Yeah, I would definitely yeah. do that. That's, that's really mm. – I mean, like, I'm doing a, uh, a, an event on June the – what is it? June the, 20, June the 30th here um, in San Diego. And every time I, I go live, I just – I go live on Facebook as well so that people that aren't local here can also attend. Um, yeah. But um, so go, go ahead and introduce yourself for people that don't know you. We're, go, we're streaming live to the group as opposed to a page. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, but so there's about 152 members now. And cool. you know, I just want to, you know, wanted people that don't maybe know who you are. Although a lot of people I do see, you know, we have 
mutual friend, Dennis Yusuf, mutual friend, Dennis Yusuf, you know. <laughs> well, I suppose I've been over to the US quite a lot now. So, um, you know, you, um, you, you tend to, um, and when you speak at conferences, as you know, people connect. That's what Facebook does. So, um, look, um, I did real estate in Australia here for four years and 11 months. And uh, during that time, I was a BDM for four years. So the BDM, my pure job, my sole job, was just listing properties, like getting new doors. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't managing properties. I, I was literally, my job, job was to go out there and grow the property management division for a company called Integrity Real Estate. And I did that in a regional town. It's where I live right now, um, called Nowra. So we're two and a half to three hours south of Sydney. Michael's actually stayed at my house. Uh, so he knows where I live. And um, at the time, it was about 22, 23,000 people. And I listed over 900 doors in uh, a four-year period. So my record was uh, 317 doors in one year. Um, and my background's actually selling fruit and vegetables. I used to drive semi-trailers from here to Sydney. I used to get up at one o'clock in the morning, drive semi-trailers and purchase fruit, vegetables and, and supply all of the local shops down here. Um, so I, and I thought, wow, if a, a fruito like me can win these national um, awards, you know, I need to be out there training people. So, um, and there was no one training what I do. So um, I started training, um, I started with BDM Coach in 2013. So it's just over five years I've been doing it now. And I've just partnered with Darren Hunter, um, where we do um, inspired growth training, which is the, the blue button, if anyone's seen our blue logo anywhere. Uh, and so we now train uh, five nations. We're training in five countries and we're doing, you know, seminars, conferences, events. We do one-on-one -on -one training, group training, um, uh, corporate training. So we're over in the U.S. We did two conferences in the U.S. earlier this year. We're back in September for two events. We're doing the Orlando um, State, so Florida State NARPM chapter, um, and we're... Uh, the other one is the Nevada. We're doing Nevada training as well. So, yeah, now it's just coaching property managers how to grow their businesses. Wow, that's really cool. So you're probably going to see Todd Breen in the Florida one, I'm sure. So good old yeah, Todd. Yeah, absolutely. Todd's going to be there. Yeah. Good. Todd, and, uh, I think Brad Larson's speaking at it as well. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So um, just so for people that don't know who I am, so I, uh, I do own a digital marketing agency, uh, Accelerate Marketing. We've been around for about 10 years. Um, I've spoken at, you know, Summit Live, Periscope Live, um, Vid Summit, um, also Local Marketers uh, Summit. And I've, um, we've helped, you know, hundreds of uh, property management companies on five continents and over the past 10 years. And, you know, you know we, um, we, we actually, you know, do the same thing. I mean, we're very similar. We've, we, we focus on getting more doors for property managers. You know, we, we've grown from, we've, uh, we've got some case studies. Actually, one that was just featured uh, on a Fortune 500 uh, company's website, uh, for, because we grew a business from over 200 to 800 doors um, in um, in over what is it two two to three years. So, and it's 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 about the the foundational, fundamental type stuff that that is not always you know I, I, as you know sexy, but you know we find that the the tortoise you know wins the race. And as you know, um, you know Dennis, and I think that that, um, you know, that's what, that's what we coach and we teach on. And, and uh, I'm always looking to connect with and, and, and talk to, you know, people like yourself that are, that are in this business that, you know, like you said, that come from varied backgrounds, uh, because I know that we all um, can, can help each other, uh, you know, learn. And, you know, I, I, I know that you've got, you've got a really great background in systems. Um, in I think you, you also, or you help a lot of these guys implement systems. I'd, I'd love to hear your take on that um, because I know that um, the number two or three question that I get when people actually ask to join the group and as I talk to property managers over the years is, is you know, how do, how do I systematize what, what, what I do, what we do? Um, not just, you know, how do we get more doors? That's the number one, probably the number one, you know, is, yeah. you know, how do we grow? Um, and we can talk about that. Um, but what, what are you seeing is, or is a, is like the most impactful strategies right now, as far as systems that would help a 
property manager that's watching this that in the group yep. here that, to help them grow the business? Yeah, it's a pretty easy question and it's a question people don't like. Um, my response to this actually is because um, firstly is – you know, I've got to work out what are they doing now because, I mean, you know, I want to grow my rent roll. I want to get more doors. Well, what are you doing? What's working? What's failing? So you've got to work that out first. You know, where, where are your leads coming from? Um, and, and it's calculating how to stop the blockage. So, Ryan, in a business, leads can come in through multiple channels, multiple funnels, as you know, whether it's Google, whether it's someone knocking on the door, whether it's a phone call. in categorizing what you're doing and where the leads are coming from. So you can work out what you're focusing on. Sometimes, you know, I've got agencies that are still advertising in a newspaper. Do, yeah. you, know, do, you, do you remember what they look like? Have you wow. seen one of them lately? Jeez, like, no. um, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's crazy. Now, in a small regional town, it's okay. But in the city, it's kind of like, oh, I don't get it. But, um, yeah, yeah so you, you've really got to work out where you, what funnels are working, what channels are working, et cetera. Um, and then I've got to, I've got to uh, look back at it. So it's like if you went into a city, Ryan, and you didn't know uh, the area and someone said, hey, Ryan, you've got to go to this um, restaurant. It's the best restaurant. What do you do? You Google it, right? Yeah. And then it, the little pin comes up on the map and you go, where's that? So what do you got to do? You've got to zoom in or zoom out and work out, oh, it's next to the museum I was at a few weeks. So, and that's what I've got to do in a business. So I've got to go in. I've got to look at what they're doing. I've got to zoom back so I can get a, a bigger scope on what they need to do. And, and most of the time, I'm going to say 90% of the time, they've got lots of leads coming in, but they're not monitoring and it's not being funneled to the right person. Because a lot of agencies in Australia have a sales department where they sell the property and a property management department where they manage. So it's two divisions in the one business. If a phone call comes in, someone says, I'm thinking about selling, it always goes to the one side and the property manager doesn't hear about it. So gotcha. there's a lot of leads coming in. So that, that's one example of a blockage that you've got to stop. Yeah. So, yeah. There's, so there's, there's not, so there's, there's a, you've got a distinctly different side of the business dealing with managing and, and one with basically getting more doors. So you got the BDM yes. and then you got the managers. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and the, I mean, for an example, uh, one prime example, in the United States, you guys have got 80% of the owners self-manage properties. Mm -hmm. It's a massive stat. So mm -hmm. the 20% the is being managed. It, it's a rough estimate. So um, obviously I do a lot of work with um, Stephen Rosenberg from Empire mm -hmm. Industries, as you mm -hmm. know, Steve. Yep. Um, you know, and, and we were chatting. I mean, Steve did a tour with us in Australia this year, and he was saying that's roughly 80% is privately managed. So why are other real estate agents so focused on chasing another realtor's business is beyond me yeah. when, you know, there's so many private owners out there. Um, and I understand there's Craigslist and there's all these areas where people advertise. But on a rental application, if a tenant has said that their previous landlord was a private owner, there's a lead that no one's focusing on. Why aren't mm -hmm. you trying to get that business? That's an example of a blockage. A lead's coming in, but no one's acting upon it. Got it. Yeah. So it's it's looking at the you know the opportunities that are right under right under your nose. That that where you know yep. like you said, if you get somebody that it fills out an application, which is a whole nother <laughs> topic altogether. Um, you know, the whole process of, you know, getting somebody to fill an application and become a, a, a renter. But yeah, those people, if, if on their application, they say, you know, I rented from a, you know, a private owner, then that's, that's somebody that, that can be followed up with. I mean, you, you can actually, you know, follow up with that private owner and say, hey, look, you know, the, you know, I know that uh, Steve has a great job of, you know, like love us or leave us type thing. Like, it's almost yep. like a no brainer type scenario. And I've, and I've yep. actually found, a, I've, surprise that more property managers don't do that where because it really is you know it's like i always like to say is you know the business that's willing and able to pay the most to acquire a new customer is the number is the one that's going to win um and, and really it comes down to if if i'm if i know that what we do is good and good service and we can make them as much money as they're making on their own without them having to manage it and take that mm -hmm. burden off of them then why not give a love us or leave us type, you know, guarantee, you know, it, or, it's a good guarantee you know. that he does. It, it certainly yeah. is. And, and can I just add, 
Um, how many tenants are landlords that, um, you know, people forget about? You know, there's a, in some areas, there's a bit of a culture that, you know, tenants are second rate. But um, I certainly know in the US that a lot of owners were left properties and started renting because they couldn't afford to live in their home. So they're downsizing and they're renting their properties out, you know, uh, on your application has it got, do you own an investment property? You know, I mean, that's a form of income. So it, it should be in there as well. That, that's just two simple strategies that you can put in place. If you were just to get one lead per week, that's two yeah. leads from each of those things. You know, you're talking about a hundred leads um, yeah. a year. Uh, totally. And, and, and you're saying that really the, the blockage is, is, that, is that, mis that non-communication between the manager and the BDM. In other words, that BDM or that manager might get that lead, but then that lead needs to be, needs to be passed from the manager or whoever the one who's accepting the application sure. you know, to the BDM. The leasing saying, agent to the BDM. Yeah. 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 But there's also, there's, yeah, there's also a sales department, the people who sell houses. So the realtors that are selling properties, they've got investors coming through a property. You might have 10 people come through a property to purchase it. Mm -hmm. You know, five of those, two of those, three of those might be an investor. Only one can buy it. What's happening with those other two or three? Where are they going to buy? So there's other leads, you know, that, 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 so people coming through, um, you know, in, in Australia side. we call them, yeah, in Australia we call them um, sales opens or open homes for people looking to purchase a property where, you know, they'll have a sign at the front, come in, have a look and buy this house. Ten people come through and they've got to register. So each person coming in to have a look to buy a property, they put their name and number down. Um, only one person's going to buy it. So the BDM or, or the property manager who's growing, getting more doors, they should be calling all of those people. Hi, you know, so if we did a script, you want to do a role play? You sure. You're the Let's investor. do it. Let's do it. Okay. You know, so I'm picking up the phone. I can't use my phone because it's in front of me. But anyway, um, you know, um, hi, Ryan. It's Dennis Yusuf here from Inspired Growth Realty. How are you going? Doing, I'm doing well. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Thank you. So, um, Ryan, over the weekend, uh, you and your partner, you went through 52 ABC Street on the weekend. Yeah, yeah. That was, it was a great property. Um, I don't know that we, you know, we might, we might want to rent it, but I mean, we're, we're still looking. Yeah. Okay. That's excellent. So I'm actually ringing from the customer service department. So you've just indicated that you are looking to use it as a potential rental, are you? Yeah, potentially we're looking, we're looking for a rental. I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're downsizing, but yeah, we're, yes. Excellent. So, well, that's my job. My job is actually from the investor support service of uh, Inspired Growth Realty. So it doesn't matter who you buy a property off, Ryan, um, I can actually help give rental opinions on any property you're looking to purchase. So okay. all I've done is I, yeah, I've just identified you as a, a lead. So okay. normally the salesperson's not pushing that to the property management side because they, they only care about selling a property, right? Got it. Yeah. yeah so, so okay. The, so, so, so I was, yeah. So I was actually playing the role of the, the renter, tenant. But yeah. Yeah. No, but no, I, I, but, but you're, you're the owner, the, 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 the purchaser. Yes. Okay. Got yeah, it. Yeah. So, so you're the purchaser. So there could yeah. be 10 purchases coming through a property and three could be investors only one buys it, then there's two that's a miss. So, Got you know, it. and it's about building pipelines, building rapports, you know, um, and sending them information on a regular basis, you know, um, doesn't matter who you buy off, we want to manage your property. Got it. So, yeah, so those, so those sales agents that are having open houses, we call them in the US, I mean, so yeah. they are, and, and, you know, they'll have those open houses. And like you said, the people that come in, that are looking to buy the house, you know, a good portion of them might not be able to buy the house. They might just want to rent. And so you could, those could be potential tenants and also they could be investors and they might own other property. And like you said, they might be downsizing from a bigger property that they've got on their hands and they've got to, they've got to do something with it. You know, it, it might even yep. be in another state or, or it might be, you know, they, they might be, it might be a way, you know, absentee landlord type situation. And at least it, it could be a potential referral, if nothing else. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. So there's a lot of um, agents in the US that only sell properties. They don't want to manage. They're not interested. Yes. You know, so you should be building referral systems with um, sales only offices. You Got know, it. That it's so important to, to deal with them. And, and you know the importance of a name, a phone number, and an email, right? You, you're, oh, yes. you know, you, you get oh, that. Yes. So can you, can you imagine setting up a Facebook ad to these potential investors about, um, you know, a, a, a property management ad? You could just start to feed into them. You yes. Know? Well, so, and, and, and actually, we got, we got John Pye and Martina on as well. So, hey, guys, yep. 
Um, so I just say, great... I've just seen Martina pop in, and we've got Dave Scow there. Dave's actually speaking at our conference. He, that guy knows how to grow rent rolls. Um, so too Michael Sands. Yep. And, and, and what we were just talking about, guys, is just, is just we just did a little role play on, on – and, and Dennis has given some, you know, two or three great strategies just to, uh, to, to generate leads from people that are already visiting your, your open houses. Okay, that's one. And then, um, and then just how to open up and unclog that, that communication that sometimes doesn't happen between – you know, the, the, you know, the BDMs and the people that are, that are managing the properties. Um, yep. And then, um, you know, and, and like you said, the value of name, email, phone number to be able to, Hey Dave, um, David Thompson just joined us um, to be able to upload that list to Facebook so that you can specifically target those people and, and develop a relationship um, on Facebook and say, Hey, look, you know, I know that you're, you know, you, you visited our last property um, you know, just know that we ha we've got this new property that just came on the market and, you know, the price range is X, Y, Z. I mean, you can still upload, you know, uh, Facebook, you know, or you can upload emails to Facebook and then retarget to those people specifically and show ads in their timeline based on the fact that you've got their email. So yeah, especially um, if they've gone to your website with the pixel, you know, if they've gone yep. to your website, you, you can obviously, um, you know, pop a, an ad in front of them. Um, yeah. Are you thinking about renting? You're thinking about buying, not happy with your current agent, Tr work out what their sore points are. What are their, their you know, um, you know, there's a strategy. There's so many things, you know, tenant not paying rent, click here to download a free thing and then get them to call you, you know, want to yeah. know how much you can get for your property. Click here. Are, are you seeing, you know, did, now that you've mentioned that, are you seeing that those, those rental analysis are still doing well as a lead magnet? I, I see that they're, they're doing pretty well within our business. Are you seeing that, that that's yeah. still getting good? Okay. What yeah. about, what about like local market, um, you know, PDF, you know, free downloads where oh, it free, talks about free market reports. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Free market reports are really cool as well. As long as, so it's not just about a, a, like a download, you've really got to still collect their name, phone number and email so you can pick up the phone and call them. As long yeah. as you've got that strategy in place, that's fine. So um, uh, I'm just thinking there's actually a client that I've got in the U S that's um, possibly getting about 30% of their leads through a free market analysis. Wow. Well, um, and guys, if you have if you have any comments, please type them in below. Martina, David, um, let us know any questions that you have. We're just doing our best to you know just go through again like systems that that you know obviously Dennis is you know he coaches a lot of property management companies. He's having a, when's your next um, meeting or uh, conference? J July. Um, so I've got July seven, eight, and nine. Um, in Brisbane. And what's really funny is the four names that I can see there, they're all coming. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. That's awesome. Well, like, like I and said, two, a lot of two, people... two of the four are speaking. Oh, nice. <laughs> well, who, who's, who's speaking there? Is that Dave? Is Dave... Um, so Dave Scow's speaking, Martina Berry. Uh, we've got her on a panel as well. Yeah. So she's, uh, she's, you know, one of the strategies that, um, you know, we both obviously work with Martina. Um, we've both pushed her to get Google reviews. I've pushed her to get on the phone and call her existing clients and everything yes. um you know the, there's a we did an interview of her um only a couple of weeks ago and we're still getting comments and it's going nuts you know? i know so, i know yeah let, let, let me let me let me comment on that a little bit so i so one of the things so I, you know a lot of people like i said i started off you know in in the beginning of this presentation um i i really have been i've been doing reputation management for gosh eight seven years now and, you know, the first, the first NARPA meeting that I attended with Todd Breen, I, I shared his booth um, because back then I was just, you know, really just getting started in the industry and I wanted to see what it was all about. And, you know, it was interesting because Yelp was actually one of the speakers there. And I'll never forget, I knew I was onto something when I attended the Yelp, uh, the, the Yelp uh, sub panel. And the guy, literally everybody wanted to like drag him out by his ears because they were so ticked off about the fact that, you know, you guys, property managers, are you're the middleman. You're the one that, unfortunately, you're like the police, the police officer. So you're you've got to you've got to represent two different people, and in essence, and and so therefore it lends itself to you not winning a lot of times. And in, in, in other words, I'll translate getting bad reviews, and and a lot of times those reviews actually you know they show up significantly on Yelp, and a lot of the positive reviews get filtered and. 
man, the property manager were just, were just all over this guy. Loretta just joined. Hey, hey Loretta. So what, what I realized and what I, you know, I've got all kinds of systems that I've been using over the years to get reviews from, you know, uh, systems where we send out an email like we did with Martina. We got a list. We uploaded the list uh, to our system. And then we sent out a request for somebody to either leave a review on Google or leave feedback. Um, so we would ask them, you know, would you recommend, you know, would you recommend them? So in other words, it, it, it gave them a little bit of a firewall or mm. protection from getting a negative review. If they, in yeah. other words, it, it, gave them the, it gave them the confidence, Martina, to send it out to her entire list because she knew that they would be asked that first question, which is, would you recommend us first? If they said yes, then they could leave it on Google. If no, then it would, it would just go directly to her. As Hotels do it, right? Whenever you say to a hotel. Yes. And, and if you don't leave them a review, what do they do? They send you the email again. Hey, you haven't given us your feedback yet. Yes. And, and what, what I realized is in using those systems is actually the best way to get reviews is good old fashioned grassroots. It's systematic. It's what I call a review culture training, where we, which is what we do with Martina, where we train the staff. We get them to understand the benefit that they're going to get as a BDM or a manager you know, from actually doing this. And, 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 you know, you get a double bonus, you get triple bonus, you get, you know, higher Google rankings, you know, which lead to increased number of phone calls. And that's why I said in the beginning, it's the tortoise and the hare race. You know, it's, yeah. it's not the sexy, you know, I'm going to run ad, AdWords ads for you or Facebook ads and upload your list and create a, you know, a, a retargeting audience based on the list that's uploaded. And we're only going to show ads to them in their timeline. And it's going to be super targeted. That's super, you know, sexy and whatever. But what really wins the race long term is absolutely what we've been doing for years. And, you know, it's one of the reasons why Steve Rosenberg, you know, three or four years ago when I got a hold of him, I'm like, Steve, look, this is what we, I recommend that we do. And it's going to take a little time. And, you know, Kevin Knight and, you know, Todd Breen and all these guys, you know, I was like, this is really, you know, where things are going. And, and now we're seeing that the, the reaping the rewards of it. I mean, it's like these guys now that have done this for th two, three, four years are now getting a consistent, you know, 200, 300 inbound phone calls a month. Yeah, you Google know? reviews are so important. I mean, you guys have got Yelp. <laughs> Yelp's nothing in Australia. We have a business company here called Rate My Agent that are really pushing for the sales department, not for yeah. property management, as much as they say they're going into property management. But um, a, a quick strategy um, that I put in place to an office yesterday, Ryan, is I told um, a business owner to go get um, five ten dollar notes and go sticky tape them to each staff member's screens. Yes. Six, so like you know, three either side, right? And go around to every single um, computer screen and put them on. And you know, the, obviously they've got a they've got a spreadsheet, you know, on, on who has. Um, and when someone gets a Google review and their name's reviewed, they rip that ten dollar bill and they drop it on Love the it. person's desk. Right? That right there, that right there, guys, is like serious, like. So I don't know if you gave this one. I actually heard that from, from somebody that I was consulting with, and yeah, they told Greg, me that strategy. Greg, Greg Watson, right? No, no, it wasn't Greg. It was, it was somebody else, and they actually okay. didn't end up using our services because I think they were just getting so much good traction from the system that you gave them. Where literally, they were, she was telling me, and I'm like, that? This was like probably three years ago. I was like, okay. that is genius because yep. it's, it's front and center. It's top of mind. It's and visual. it's it's visual and, and it's, and it, <laughs> and it, and it, and it creates an instant reward. So Martina comment. Thank you for the comment, Martina. 155. Let, yeah. That's awesome. 155 reviews and crystal. Yeah. Crystal's on vacation. right now. I don't know what I'm going to do without crystal being gone uh, or with crystal being gone another day. I mean, I'm, I'm like, uh, she's, she's, uh, she's awesome. So, so let me, I, I'd love to know Martina, if you've implemented what, what Dennis, that, that little, uh, mind bomb that uh that dennis just dropped there that was really good that's a great strategy and if you have yeah, so okay. and what i just to add to it i said um i double dog dared them and i said go get 10 put 10 on each person and if you get 10 the company's going to double it so it's it's a hundred dollars but they'll double it and the bosses sit i was doing a live recording to the whole staff and the boss is sitting there going and i said so you've got 10 staff in the room it's a thousand dollars it's two thousand dollars for you to get um, 100 reviews. Do you really care? Do you understand how much business this is going to create for you? And he went, and then he was pro, I could see he was tick, 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 tick. He was pro, and he went, 
Okay, I get it. That, I, look, look, <laughs> that you are, I mean, that you, I would, va I would guesstimate, honestly, the value of a review is in the thousands. It's, yeah. I would literally pay thousands of dollars for one good, and I'm going to give another strategy here, okay, because a, a review, and this is from a, a report that was done here in the U.S. with over 3,000 people. Steve Rosenberg just joined. We got the big dogs in the house. So now we got, we got Steve, Steve here. Um, so here's the deal. Um, they, they found that the number two thing behind the actual score, your, your five-star, four-star, three-star, that people looked at was what people said. Okay, so in other words, it's not just good enough to say Dennis was great. Dennis no. is great. I mean, like, it's not. It's, it's who they are, what benefit. So it's the 3W testimonial, okay? What benefits they received and why they would recommend you. If you, if you get them to, to follow that structure, you'll get a yeah. consistent review every single time. And it, that will absolutely lead to huge conversions. Yeah, um, absolutely. It, it drop names, you know. And, and Ryan, now, now, um, even a bad review, people should be replying them, liking the reviews, and you know, get your staff to jump on there and like it, like all, all the likes we can comment on here. That those are all the little intricacies that help your Google reviews, as, as you would know, and respond to the bad reviews. That is the yes. most important thing to do. Yes, absolutely. And Michael, um, I want to. Now, let me let me try something here. Do you mind? I want to see if I can bring Michael on with you being on. If they're gonna, if it'll actually do a three. Let me see. Hold do on. Do you have second. to? I know, right? Let me see. <laughs> Hold Next, on. you're gonna ask if we can have Steve on. I mean, seriously. <laughs> Hold on one second. Let me let me see. I want to see if we can. Let's just one second. And if and and if I if it does drop you, I'm gonna bring you right back in like in like yep. two minutes. I'm just gonna bring uh, Michael on to say hi. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So let's see. Um, can't bring Michael. Michael, go ahead and ask again if you can join because I saw that you asked and I want to see if um, I offered chocolate. I had two bars of chocolate on my desk. Let's see. Uh, uh, okay, I had two chocolate on my, on my desk and said the first two people go get review, get a bar of chocolate. We had five five star reviews in five minutes. I had to go to buy 20 more bars of chocolate wine and it also worked. Well, that, it would have been cheaper to give them $10. <laughs> Dude, that's great. Martina, if you can get reviews for chocolate, man, keep right. doing it. You chocolate know? and alcohol. It's, it wow. always works. That's exactly. Is it dark chocolate? You know, what kind of chocolate? Is it at least like lint or is it like just good old no. or, you know, lint, lint is down here in Australia, buddy. Oh. Let me just say, okay, dairy milk is the best chocolate in Australia. Oh, it's very, yes, creamy, super creamy. I love that. I love that stuff. Um, all right. So we've been dropping some really good, you know, information uh, here. Chocolate was three dollar a bar. Wow, that's some good chocolate. <laughs> so, three dollars a bar. But that's but to get a review for, I mean, like I said, because okay, it takes ten reviews for somebody to trust your business, and ten reviews for somebody to make a, a, a decision as far as whether or not to go with your business. So, look, if you can get, if you can get ten reviews Cadbury. for thirty dollars, okay, Cadbury then all more power to you because if that's all it takes to get you, you will see, here's the thing that people don't think about is that these reviews are there forever. They stay mm -hmm. there forever. And a lot of businesses, especially in Australia do not do this stuff. They do not. So if you get 10 reviews, you're going to be ahead of your competition almost 80. Yeah, and and you only need one review to get a star rating. Now Google have really lowered the, the standard to do that. So, yeah. um, you know, it used to be seven. It used to be, then it cut down to five. And, and only, you know, in the last six months, I think it is, it's one. And, and people can also choose now what, what order. Do they want to yeah. see the best reviews first or the worst reviews? You know, yes. I, I, I've got to be honest. When I'm going to a restaurant, obviously I do a lot of travel and you don't know if it's a good coffee shop or, or whatever. And I'm looking on Google. I don't look at the good reviews. If they've got a, a 4.5 or, you know, you know, they're good, but I look at the bad ones yes. and I'll read them if I want to eat there. And if there's a good reply from the owner, that gives them credibility. I'm going into that restaurant. Totally. Now here, here's the thing I want to really focus in on Martina while we're here. I, I just am blown away that you've gotten basically a, a review for, for $3 and chocolate bar. That's just awesome. <laughs> but here, but here's, here's the thing I really want to know though. What is it translated to over the last five months in terms of increased percentage increase of phone calls, inbound phone calls for your business and, and, or 
um, increase traffic to your website, okay? So in other words, we can convert traffic. When you get more unique visitors to your website, those people can be converted with the strategies that you talked about earlier, okay, Dennis? So now, so if you get more traffic, if you convert, you know, let's say 2% of the, of the people that visit your website and you get a thousand extra visitors to your website because of the fact that you're now showing up in the search results, because of the fact that you've got Google reviews and you're doing these things and you're replying to the reviews and doing all the things we're talking about, man, that happens month after month after month. So this is, this is the tortoise versus the hare. This is, this is the found, that's why we call this the foundation. This is your foundation for your business. And um, so my question is, is what does it translate into? And this is where we've gotten, you know, in the beginning of my business, like I didn't understand the power of this until I actually saw two, three, four years out what was going on long term with these businesses and that, and that those increased number of phone calls and that, and that increased traffic that they were realizing never stopped. It just kept on going. And so what I'm wondering is, and I don't want to set the expectation that it's going to happen overnight because it's not, it doesn't happen over, especially not in big cities because, and by the way, the bigger the city, the more the competition. And think about it. You've got more competition. These guys have been building their local presence for 20, 30, 40 years. We just took on a client that's, you know, 35 years in property management, you know, Harriet. Um, and man, I mean, unbelievable. So to, to be able to supplant somebody like that in a Houston market or an LA market or a Sydney market or a, you know what I'm saying? Is going to, is going to take some time. It's going to take a year to two years. And, and this also goes to, you know, are you getting links? Are you getting links from other local businesses to your business so that you actually show up in the search results? Um, mm. Very, very important. If you're not, Again, this is, this is the foundational stuff. This is, so the two things that we, that we focus on in the beginning is reputation management and marketing of, the, of those reviews. And then, and then also we focus on the other component, which is so important, which is local search engine optimization. And I, I want to focus on local, not just you know, huge SEO. I'm talking local, meaning specifically claiming your directories, and then also the other big thing that we, that we focus on and, and we see huge dividends paid from is getting links from other strategic businesses that are in your market. And those are not just not now think about this. So I'll give one strategy. So talk to all your strategic partners, the people that, that you use, Feature them on a blog post, send them the link to your blog post, and have them put that blog post link on your website. Yeah, and on, and on, put on, it their, on, on their website. Yeah, on their, yeah. yeah and, and put it on LinkedIn. Put it yes. on Facebook. Put it yeah. on everywhere. You well, know? Well, what I'm saying is, is, is have, mm. have them put that link that you sent them somewhere on their website so you have a link back to your site Google sees that, that they're a local business in your, in your area and they see that you're linked, that is going to help. And there's other, so many more strategies to do that. But those, that's just mm -hmm. one. If you do that, it will significantly help your business. So besides that, though, Dennis, what other systems are you seeing that are underutilized that can really help a 100 to 200 door property management company grow? Yep. There's so two key areas that I'm going to talk about, um, and it's one's video. Okay, so um, obviously uh, you understand the importance of video and YouTube. So um, uh, obviously, and social media, Facebook is so underutilized. It is absolutely underutilized. Um, um, I'm yet to find um, a, a Facebook page in Australia or New Zealand or the United States that I think is absolutely rocking real estate when it comes to, um, you know, and please, if you've, if you've got one that you think's great, you know, there's some people that are doing it okay. Some people are doing Facebook really well in one area. And then you've got some people that are doing Facebook in another area really good, but they're lacking it here. There's no, no one's really mastered it yet, you know, and, um, you know, um, Darren and I have got the largest Facebook following um, for real estate globally, but, um, it, 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 you know, it's taken us a long time to do it. You've got to do, you know, but if I can just go back to video. 
So there's a lot of pain points that owners have. There's a lot of pain points that realtors have, you know, and Martine has done videos, you know. Um, so it's Callie. Cal, Cal, Callie Smith. Kaylee. Just, just, Kaylee. She, Kaylee. She, Ka I mean, she's Kaylee, a little yeah. superstar. Kaylee's she a little is, superstar. I mean, yeah. seriously, the, I, I, Kaylee, you are yeah. the only one that I know of that's actually interviewing, like we're doing right now, that I've ever, ever heard of that's actually interviewing, doing interview style like either to a group or to your page. Now, I, I'd like to know if you're doing it to your page, but, and then I, and I want you to continue, Dennis, what, yeah. what you're talking yeah, about. No, no, that's yeah. cool. So, so the pain points for, you know, if someone's doing a video, uh, and Michael Sands mastered this. I've got yeah. to say, out of everyone I know, he's done the best out of it by, you know, do, doing a pain point video, whether it's, you know, um, you know rent not coming in or, um, uh, you know, whatever it is, whatever a pain point is at the time, he will do a video and he puts it on his YouTube channel. It's linked back to his website. Um, it's, it's blasted on social media as well. You know, when he was in Bali, he did, you know, in Melbourne, there was issues with the rain. So he did a video and he prepared people for, um, you know, he prepared people for, for the damages that could happen and reminded because it was over Christmas so he, while he's in Bali over Christmas, he didn't want his phone calls to come in. So he sent them all a video link through his YouTube channel. And, and the more people that watch a YouTube channel that's linked to your, um, your website, Ryan, what happens? Do you get better SEO? Totally. Absolutely get better SEO. So, totally. you know, and we're not well, talking about, it's got to be a business um, YouTube channel. Totally. And here, and here's, now here's the other thing I would do is like, and, uh, Kelly, this is really great. So she's actually going to, she's going live with Kelly Seaton today. Kelly um, Seaton's a little superstar as well. Okay. What does Kelly do? Is she another property manager? Yep. She's another property manager in another state. Oh, actually same state, but completely different areas. Like the, they're miles away from each other. Wow. I, and I really, I, I'd love to see, um, Kelly, if, if you want to jump in, I, I do want to see if we can, I mean, I want to see if we can do this side by side because when I do portrait and I bring somebody else in, it kicks the other person out. And I don't want to kick you out. I want to, I want to see if they've maybe made it so you can bring do, you know, three people at once. That's the one advantage of using zoom is that you can actually have up to, you know, what's eight or nine or 10 100. people. Yeah. A hundred. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've never done a hundred, but yeah, I, I know I can't even imagine. Um, but here's, It'd be but, nuts. but that, but I will say that that is one of the strategies because then if you get the more people that you get in there, the more they're going to share it. So get as many yeah. people into a zoom as you possibly can. But here's the other, here's the other strategy is once, once I, once we go live. So we just did it with this. We just did this with Jason. We recorded a bunch of videos with him um, about three weeks ago. And what we did is we spliced those videos up and we rebroadcast those videos live using a, a tool that we, we use called restream. Okay. So this is Cali. This is a really big tip. Okay. So, cause live, makes it so that you can actually engage in comments and you actually get a lot more reach on YouTube and Facebook when you can actually stream live. Mm -hmm. So you can stream live at the same time when you actually have a recorded video to YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, and 10 other platforms all at the same time. So um, very, very so something to keep in mind. If you're already doing that, um, Callie, then you might want to consider you know, the next step, you know, this is, you know, this is what I learned in, you know, speaking at Summit Live and Periscope Live. And, you know, I've been doing this for years now. So um, she will be giving her insight for landlords, not camera bed hair. <laughs> nice. yes. Yeah. So, so just, just so you know, um, uh, uh, what I've been doing is because I mean, fear of cameras as well. So one of the, the first things that I do train people to do, Ryan, is actually get on camera, do video blogs. Okay. Yes. Or we call it a vlog, right? Yes. Um, because if I can just, I'm going to scope back a bit. When someone's looking for a property manager or someone's having problems, what do they do? They jump onto Google and they go, how do I get my tenant to pay rent? How do I kick my tenant out? So you want to have a video explaining, um, you know, with a heading, this is how you kick a tenant out tenant not paying rent you know you've got to have those sore points and have have those and then they're back ended onto your website as a blog written as well as a video you know yep. so it goes back now 
it's easy for me to say get in front of a camera. You and I, we've got no problem. We'll get in front of a camera and talk for hours, right? But yes. for you know, someone like Martina, for example, when I told her she's got to get on camera, I think she was going to jump across the table and, and belt me one. <laughs> you know, um, yes. Stephen Rosenberg, Michael, Dave Scow, they're experts at being in front of a camera. But once you do a live video on a camera, that's completely different. And Kaylee, well done. She did a, um, a, a four-minute live. You've got to be a minimum four minutes. For, for sure. a live video. So, it, so the reach, I would say right? 10. I would say 10 on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, well, it, it generally takes three minutes to work out uh, for Facebook to work out um, the algorithms of who's this should be reached to. And, you know, and then, and then you want that engagement. If you're getting the engagement, you keep talking. So um, what I've done, Ryan, in uh, my group of everyone, the Inspired Growth Inner Circle, is I put up a 14-day challenge. And what I did is I said, who wants to be part of a 14-day challenge? And I waited and I waited and waited for everyone to jump on. And once I got about 40 names, I said, okay, the challenge is you've got to do 14 videos in 14 days. Nice. A and they all freaked out, of course, you know. Um, and then I changed the goalposts only a couple of days ago. And I said, because they've all been posting in the group. Yeah. But, you know, and now what they've got to do is they've got to um, do some. And I think Dave, his ones today, um, he's doing a video, a live video for the, um, for the first time on his page. You know, Dave had a bit of a... a a, a, a snide remark at me and that's cool right <laughs> yeah yes <laughs> but, but, yes but you know that that's cool so but it, you know it's practice 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 do you remember the first time someone sent you a text message ryan and they said to you hey do you want to make catch up for a coffee and you went why the heck didn't they call me they're rude why'd they send me a text yes. right yes. and now everyone's texting no one's picking up the phone right yes so yes. Video, and 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 i'm the thing is, video is the next thing, as you know. Video is so important. Trust. Yes. People look at reviews for trust. Yes. People look at our eyes for trust, and video is the master of that. Totally. And 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 I'm just I the other the other thing that what what I hear you saying is is that people want to see who they're going to be doing business with. They want to, they want to, um, they want to experience, because look, 80% of communication is body language, 80%. Yeah. Um, end of story. Like, there's nothing else that needs to be said. And, and that's the reason why video is so successful. And so, you know, the other thing, the opportunity is, is, is to leverage the ability to be able to show you're an authority um, to the people that, that, that want to potentially use your services. So there's, there's tools. Yeah. There's tools that you can use. Like, um, um, oh, there's a, there's a couple, I mean, you can do use the Google keyword tool, but there's one that we use now that, um, Oh, ask it's called ask the, I'll, I'll think of it in a second, but it, it creates and it generates all of the questions that people are asking around a cer certain topic. Every single question that's, that is, particularly asked about a topic like property management or anything that you want to know. And, um, uh, not ask the expert, ask the, ask the expert. It's something else, but I'll think of it in a second. But, um, the other thing that we do is that, and I want to, uh, consumers will search your business online first before they even, yes, no doubt. Yeah, we're a fishbowl. Yes. Online is our, yes. And so it's definitely your resume. Now, the other thing that we do is when, when, I, when we record video like this, we repurpose it as well. That's the other thing is, is you can easily download any video that you create, whether it's on YouTube and you go live on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, and then you can repurpose that and make obviously a blog out of it, make a YouTube video. You can re-upload it to YouTube. You can create a podcast out of it, et cetera, et cetera. So in other words, that is, and that's probably the most important thing that you can do if you take the time to create the content, just have somebody on your staff, take the time to download the video and repurpose the video for other platforms. So you just re upload it to YouTube, create the podcast, upload it to Periscope, upload it to obviously create a blog post out of it, etc. cetera. Um, and by doing that, you will be omnipresent as Frank yeah. Kern says. And, um, and so, yeah, so any, any questions, if you guys want to 
type of man. Any, anything else? Well, yeah, that was your first. That was your first suggestion. What was now? Video. Yeah, the first. The, so we spoke about Google. So Google and the videos, because it's like when someone does a search, you know. And Kaylee's just mentioned, uh, you know, um, people Google first. You know, it's the online resume. So on those pain points, if someone does a Google, you know, when you've done a Google for something, you might search how to cook a quiche, how yes. to cook a lasagna. You know, yeah. there's always that video at the top. You yes. know, because. Google owns YouTube, so they recognize video is how much stronger is video blog over a, a blog. 40 yeah. times, I, I see 70 times. I hear so many different stats from experts, I don't know. But yeah. we know it's more times than written, right? Yes. So, um, you know, if you've got a video out there, a video blog on a tenant not paying rent or um, how to transfer your management, um, that video will come up and then you become that front of mind. Um, so the second one is actually using social media. Um, target marketing. So a lot of people, you know, oh, I've only got 200 likes on my page. I've only got 50 likes. It doesn't matter how many likes you've got. People don't have to like your page for you to reach them. Yeah. So this is where you've got to make sure you've got your ads manager in place. You know, I go into agencies. I was speaking to an agency yesterday. He's got 65,000 names, phone numbers, and emails. Right, wow. and he's just about to employ BDM, and he says, "What do I do?" I said, first thing you do is get him to pick up the phone." <laughs> you got sixty-five thousand yes. people to call." He's had a business for six years, and he's grown a database that big. But Ryan, what would you do with the name, phone number and email? You would put that into the back end of what? I put it, well, I put it, I put it, I put it into Facebook or Facebook. I would, and also I would, I would definitely send a broadcast message out to that, to that group Absolutely. or to that, to that list. And, and just and do whatever I could to add value to them and, and, and potentially create a, you know, like a community, like, like something like this, you know? Yeah, spot on. So uh, one thing, if I can just share what Kaylee's doing, I think it's amazing what she's doing. She's doing, a, um, you know, that, um, the live video that she's doing. So what she should be doing with her database is, um, you know, she can actually have a, a, a section on a website, like a knowledge library. Uh, where she puts those videos into because you're talking about extracting it, putting it on there, obviously with the YouTube channel. But um, with the back end of, she could actually have the back end of a website. She could target all of her audience, letting them know on Facebook that there's going to be a broadcast, a live broadcast that's going to yes. be happening. Um, and then she can actually retarget those people as well, you know, yes. through um, other means of retarget marketing. We're, we're getting a little bit deep in the understanding of, of Facebook marketing. It, it's like a four hour session we could do on it. Yes. But the, to, just to, to simplify it, when you put a, a list into the back end of Facebook, Facebook, what it does, it works out its algorithms. It goes, okay, you've got 10,000 names, let's say, and you're putting it all in and it says, oh, um, we've actually found similar people to these. Would you like us to create another list and duplicate it? You click yes, because you can turn that 10,000 into 50,000. You know, and then you can actually do an ad to all of them because Facebook works out what Dennis likes. On uh, you know, it, it goes okay. Dennis is a coach and a trainer, and he likes a lot of real estate pages. He likes a lot of this, so it, it looks at what I like and it finds similar people to me. Yeah, it says, oh, maybe he's a target market. And investors, they all think the same. They're like fish in the sea. They like similar things. So yep. you know, and that's where you know you can create those audiences in the back end of Facebook, so you can target more people. Yeah, how do I do that? LOL. Totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So how Kaylee, do you do uh, yeah. just so you know, Kelly, I heard that um, you know you're you're a member. We've actually got videos of that in the back end of our web, of our um, training. You'll be able to watch them. Look at that, Martina. Import your list and create audiences. I love it. Um, She's a legend. Yeah, right. Like that's 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 awesome. She's a superstar. She knows right. how to grow a rent roll. Yeah, right. And she she's she is. She's doing really well. So, um, what time are we? What time is it now? I don't want to make sure because I've got another meeting that I've got. I, um, are we are we at the top of the hour again? Just about. Yeah, we are. I, I've okay. got to get my kid. I've got to get my uh, youngest daughter to soccer. My middle daughter to soccer. Wow. We'll have. Okay. Thank you. So let, let's just summarize really quick. So, so awesome, Kali. The Kali. Kali. Um, Kaylee. I always want to, Kaylee, I always, I'm just going to say K. Um, K. All right. K. So, um, so here, hotel check in. Okay. Nope. Um, so I'm going to Sedona tomorrow. I just got a reminder on Expedia. Um, okay. So really quick guys, let's just summarize. So what Dennis and I talked about are some really powerful strategies to help you grow your doors and help you systematize the, uh, the acquisition of new doors, new leads, 
and new prospects for your business. So you can have a uh, reliable business, one that grows consistently over time. Okay. And that's really the most important thing. And Dennis talked about a, a, a couple of things. One is unclog that, that, you know, the, the communication between the BDM and the, and the managers. Uh, he also talked about, you know, how, you know, to collect that you should really, that uh, a suggestion is Stop if you also are doing, yeah, if you're doing sales is, and you're doing open houses is, you know, ask those people if they're, if they are, if they do own another property, because they might, they might actually, you know, uh, either own a property that you can manage or they might want to, they want, might, might want to rent or, you know, so there's, there's opportunities in other parts of your business to create leads for your property management business is what Dennis was really, was really talking about. Then we talked about, you know, live video and video in general. And we talked, well, before that, we talked about getting reviews and some strategies for getting reviews. And, uh, and I talked about how, and we both talked about how important it was to respond to reviews. And we gave some really, really powerful strategies like putting, taping the dollars on the screens in order to keep top of mind, you know, with uh, the people that are on your staff and make it fun. Um, so if you got some value out of this, you know, put some comments below, let us know what you think. We're going to, I'm going to interview, um, somebody else, probably going to bring Michael Sands in, uh, to have him talk about his good old VR stuff. You know, good old Michael is always good to talk about, you know, the technology high -tech stuff. He's yep. the tech man. He is man. And, um, <laughs> Sands let, coaching. Yes. And let us know what, what questions you have. Dennis, thank you for jumping on. It's been a yep, while. No problem. Can I just quickly add yeah. another thing? Um, obviously Google is recognizing Facebook reviews on Google searches as well. So make sure that you got your address on your Facebook page linked to your Google as well. Make sure it's exactly the same. Yes. If you've moved office, make sure that you've changed both. Um, so if you do a search, you know, it'll come up Google, um, you know, it'll have, if you're doing a Google search, Facebook comes up there and says, you know, you've got 55 Facebook likes or, you know, and, and be sure to make sure that you have, um, told Facebook that you are a true business. You'll see some pages with a circle and a tick in it. You've got to authenticate your business page. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it's so like important. Facebook's got its own search engine optimization as well. And they are, you know, Facebook and Google, they're enemy. They don't like each other, right? Yes. So Facebook's trying to become the, you know, let's just Facebook it, right? So you've got to yes. um, make sure you've got those things right there as well. And, and uh, yes, very, very great tips. Basically what Dennis is saying is make sure that you have exact name, address, and phone number, NAP information for all the directories that you have down to the, down to the letter. So every single, you know, if you've got a unit number, make sure the unit number is represented the same. Phone number has to be the same. Yes. Um, yeah. So if, you know how you have area codes. So some people they'll have a, a like a, a you got different state code phone numbers in the U S yeah. we have here in Australia. So however you format it, you've got to do it exactly the same. It's a computer totally. system. It doesn't understand what a, you know, the, yes. the, the stuff is. So it's got to be identical. So important. So um, thank you. Very, very good information. Guys, this is huge, huge information. I hope you apply this. These are, these are foundational topics. So if you're in the 100 to 200, you know, uh, property range, if you're, or, or you know, uh, door range, and this is, these are great strategies to start implementing now so that you can grow for years to come. And um, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, Dennis, thank you. And, and uh, Callie, I apologize for, you know, I, I want to say, Cal, I don't know, Kaylee, Cal, you know, I don't Kay. know. I Kay. It's the Australian slang. Kay. Golly. Kay. It's tough. I reckon we just call it K-Girl. K. K-Girl. K-Girl. All right. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dennis. Have fun no in problem. soccer. Thanks for having me. You bet.